do. What? Is stand right here like you're reading quotes and then turn around and be like, oh, hey. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. Like, see <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, hey. <laughs> no. That's stupid. Hey, guys. Scanner Danner here with my son, Caleb, behind the camera at my brother's shop as usual. Uh, today we're working on a 2006 Chevy Express van. This is a friend of mine. We play ice hockey together in what I call a beer league. And it's an over 40 beer league. And uh, anyway, uh, Mike is the owner of this van and he knows I do this stuff and uh, asked if we could take a look at it for him. His complaint is um, throttle body related. So he has a new throttle body put on it already and the way he was describing it to me is intermittently he'll be driving it and then it'll just lose all power. And I believe he said he pulls over, shuts it off, waits for a few seconds, restarts it, and it comes back and it runs fine. It does already have a new throttle body on it. And uh, we just did a couple of visual inspections before we turned the camera on and this has like household wiring on it. I don't know if my friend Mike is an electrician. I'm guessing that Mike is an electrician because here you can see we have some uh, some household wiring, some conduit. Uh, we got some wire nuts under the dash. We have some wire nuts under the hood. And when we see wire nuts and household wiring as mechanics, uh, we tend to uh, um, you know be a little bit concerned about those things. So we'll see if they're related. I don't know for sure. There's also another wire that runs under the dash and then down under the car. It's this blue wire. I don't know what that's going to. That's a concern as well. Uh, I did a full scan on this before we started and I had a no-com initially. Couldn't communicate with anything on, on any module on the network. The, the van runs, so it's not a no-start no-com, it was just a no-com. Then I did global OBD and I was able to communicate, then I re-identified it again and now I can communicate and um, I don't know, I, I just hope we're not fighting communication problems along the way because that'll just make our job a lot, a lot more difficult. Uh, let's see what we have on the scan tool. All right, so we have all kind of codes here. Three of them are related to the oxygen sensor heater, well, bank two sensor one. And then we have uh, TP, uh, TP or APP sensor one circuit. That's the P0120, uh, the P1516 electronic throttle mod, maybe module, motor, wouldn't be motor, verse throttle position performance and then TP1 and 2 correlation. All right, so not only is the throttle body new, but someone has also wired in a new pigtail for the throttle body motor too. So um, this has definitely been worked on in the past, which is what he told me. It's been a while since we talked, but um, he, he's still continuing to have these throttle body codes. And one of the first things that I thought about um, was this power distribution box right here. Um, we have had just done one recently where we had a bad power distribution box. Those were ignition uh, circuit related codes. So I was thinking about the box and I was also thinking about the wiring that we did uh, with a shorted reference circuit on, um, it wasn't the Hummer. I think the Hummer had the bad box. And then it was a Chevy truck that had a wiring harness that ran above the uh, valve cover. It was rubbing through and shorting out the reference circuit for the throttle body or no, that was uh, for the five volt reference. I think it was related to the throttle body too. But anyway, I, I still am concerned about the power distribution box. Uh, just recently we were at uh, a campground and my neighbor next to me had a Chevy Express um, uh, camper basically. And he had an issue with his, with his power distribution box too. So anyway, just stuff I'm thinking about given that the throttle body's new, the wiring's been done. I don't know if they changed the engine computer or not. So that's something that we need to look into as well. And I don't know if this year uses a separate throttle body module. So we're going to have to familiarize ourselves a little bit. Um, I think first step is I just want to look at some data. I'm just do, going to do a little bit of wiggle testing here while I'm looking at my throttle position sensors. Uh, eh, maybe not. Let me pull up a diagram and see what I'm dealing with. I have to poop. Let it pass. <laughs> Throttle actuator control module. It does have one at the left 
rear of engine compartment. So that's a parcel view. I think it's this guy right here. I think it, it might be this. That connector look, just looks like it wiggles a lot. But it does show a throttle actuator control module. The newer ones aren't like that. They, they include the module as part of the engine computer and this one is not like that. So it is separate. It has a separate module for this. Yeah, that's, that's definitely it. There's C1 connector. That's the one I was just wiggling on. And then the C2 connector is on the page prior. That guy right there. All right, so back to my scanner. I just want to wiggle the wiring on this module while I'm watching this data. That's just the outside housing that moves that much. It doesn't look like the wiring itself does. Okay. I did a case study on one of these with my students at the school that ended up having a bad ground wire and it had all kind of throttle body codes too. And I'm wondering, so that's battery positive. Just looking at, at some of his wiring that he's got here. I'm just doing some visual inspections is all at the moment. And I'm keep, keeping my eye on my throttle position sensors as I'm doing this. G102 on the left rear of the engine. Let's take the doghouse off. How the hell does these come out of here? Just <laughs> no, there's a little bit more than just <laughs> yeah, clearly. What the hell, man? Right? That's what I'm saying. Can't you just work through that crack right there? I don't even know that I need to be in here. That's the hard, that's the worst part about it. You can't take the seat out to take the doghouse off. It can't be. <laughs> uh, you know, it kind of sucks as we film now. I understand what you're talking about editing wise and like all of this is shit. Were we able to pull the front this way? Like push that all the way in and like come up that way? Not a chance. I've never had to unbolt a seat to get a doghouse off. What kind of no, stupid shit is there. that? This is why we charge more <laughs> for um, vans with dog houses. You're watching it right here. Stupid design. All that for just probably nothing. So this could be that ground right here. I think that might be the ground. Maybe. Not sure. Just eyeball and wiring here. Oh, someone used butt connectors and they're not the sealable type. They're heat shrink butt connectors, but they never shrunk them. So, I mean, that's great. You used heat shrink butt connectors, but you never heated or they shrink them. Oh. I didn't even pull hard. I just pulled one apart. Yeah, and of course my scan data went nuts. That one's at five now. Guess where we are, Caleb? We're in the rewiring phase that I hate so much. The worst part though, I, it, what I don't want to start doing is, is rewiring this and then we have no chance of recreating the fault. You know, was that it right there? I shouldn't even taken the tape off. It was a mistake on my part dealing with an intermittent taking that tape off because then you question was that it or not my guess is no because someone changed the throttle body probably first and it didn't fix it and then they rewired it and it didn't fix it and so i'm thinking that is not our problem these changes on tps1 right now are only 0.2 of a volt that is not a non-issue whoever did this didn't didn't crimp them enough either I don't know if this was Mike or not. If it was Mike, Mike, you didn't crimp them good enough. If it was someone else, wherever you took it, you need to not take it there anymore. Because if this was a garage that did this, this is not a good repair. Mike, if you did this yourself, I'll let you slide. All right, that's good for now. You know, the other mistake we made, given that we were already inside is not test driving it. I really wanted to not get the engine real hot. I thought we were able, gonna be able to uh, 
do a, do some visual inspections and find this issue. I'm still hoping for that. I really don't think that's our problem. These do need to be done better. But I just tugged on them and we're okay there. And I was worried about this one wiring harness rubbing through. DOS manifolds are both leaking. Both of them. Got a broken bolt on that one. Got a broken bolt on this one too. See the bolts completely missing. Yeah, this this bank two sensor one oh two is pretty much not functional at all. It's pretty much hovering hovering around four hundred and fifty millivolts. See if we can make it work with exhaust gas. It did have heater codes. Starting to heat up. So the sensor's working fine. Yeah. And now we just went in the closed loop. The sensor's not working. So we definitely have a heater circuit problem on that side. I'm not overly um, concerned about looking at my fuel trim data and stuff like that, especially with these exhaust leaks. Although the long-term trim doesn't look bad. Eight and five. Short-term's not bad either. I'm interested in battery voltage. Intermittent problems are the most difficult thing that we deal with in this field because if it's happening right now, it's generally not hard to find. When you have an intermittent fault like this, it can really be difficult. You, we're gonna have to go drive this. I'm gonna have to put air in the tires. I'm just looking at some freeze frame data here. So this throttle position A code, intake air was 87 degrees, engine coolant was 66 degrees. So that happened right at startup, right at startup. Let me look up these code numbers too. Failed this ignition is just the, the O2 code. Yeah, all the O2 codes were the last ones that failed. P0120, P0220. Just using the troubleshooter for a little help. The 120 code sets when TPS sensor one signal is less than 0.37 of a volt or more than 4.5 volts. So that's a huge range fault. So in other words, like both extremes, inspect related circuits, broken wires, the outer wire insulation may look fine, but the internal copper strands may be partially broken. Breaks in the wires usually occur within one to four inches of the throttle body connector. Wiggler testing may also induce trouble code. So that's, that's a pretty cool tip. Um, maybe that's why someone changed the wiring too. I guess they're known for that. I also wanted to look at the P0220. So, so same thing, TPS2, it's really the same thing. So it's, uh, it's affecting both. The 120 was TPS1, the 220 was TPS2. Key on engine off while at idle, TPS2 reading should be 0.2 to 0.8. Inspect throttle actuator control module connectors for signs of water intrusion. That's what I'm talking about. And that's the module that we were messing with, Caleb. Uh, if this occurs, multiple DTCs may set with out circuit or component conditions found during diagnostic testing. When TAC module detects condition within the TAC system, more than one TAC system DTC may be set. This is due to many redundant tests run continuously. That makes sense. Locating, repairing one individual condition may correct more than one DTC. Got it. Inspect related circuits for broken wires inside the insulation. The outer wire insulation may look fine. Again, the wiring breaks within one to four inches of the throttle body. So that was the 120 and 220 codes. Just familiarizing myself here. Uh, codes menu, going back to that again. I'm not worried about the O2 heater codes. I know about those, we'll look at that. All right, so 1516 and 2135. 1516, so DTC sets when TAC Module detects that the commanded and actual throttle positions are not within calibrated range. So that sounds like this will set two with, along with the other ones, uh, not within calibrated range of each other. ECM detects a current draw, or the ECM detects a current draw of more than nine amps on the motor circuits for more than 0.18 of a second. Inspect throttle body for following condition. 
throttle blade that's not in rest, throttle blade that's binding open or closed, throttle blade that is free to move open or closed without spring pressure. With the ignition on, throttle body disconnected, measure for voltage between TAC one and two and a good ground, they want you to, so check our ground there. Voltage is more than zero volts, test affected motor. All right, we should probably take a look inside, make sure we don't have pieces of debris in that air intake with that code. With that 1516, what was the other code I said? 20, 2135. So in my opinion, the, one, the 220 code and the 120 code will also potentially set the 1516 code. Let's see what 2135. This one says conditions for running the DTC is the 120, 122, a bunch of codes, but the 120 and 220 codes are not set. All right, so mounted in the throttle body sensors provide signal got all that tps1 signal voltage decreases and tp sensor 2 signal voltage increases that's not what we just saw we saw them both rise together condition for setting the ecm detects the difference between one and two exceeds predetermined value for greater than one second this is just basically when they don't agree with each other and when 120 or 220 isn't set and it said one should go one way and one should go the other that's not the case look there they both go up together. I don't see that as being a problem either. That, that just might be incorrect information. I've seen them go opposite each other, but see it says TPS sensor one signal voltage decreases, TPS sensor two signal voltage increases. That's not what we see. Look, one and two down here, 0 0.14, 0 0.14. And as I go wide open, they're both doing the same. I mean, unless somebody wired this thing backward well, if you wired the 5 volt reference and grounds backward, they would make them both the same. I wonder if that's just the problem. We should go drive this. It should do it right now, though. Like, if that was the case, it should do it right now. We gotta go drive this, Caleb. Let's, uh, I'm not gonna put the doghouse on, but I gotta at least snap this dash, parts of the dash back together so we can drive it. So two things before we test drive this. I uh, want to look for moisture in the in the module connection that was mentioned. And then I just want to do a visual on this air intake tube and make sure we don't have anything, any debris or anything that's like causing a uh, potential issue. I've seen throttle bodies in the past with pieces of plastic from the air intake stuck in them. I'm not seeing that. So that is not looking like the case. Our module's right here. Grab the scan tool. No, okay. All right, this keys off. This will not be a scan tool type thing. This is just gonna be a visual inspection. I was just looking for corrosion and I see nothing. These kind of things can end up backfiring on you. What I just did there, maybe the order of things starting with this was not a good place because start touching things with intermittent problems you can end up momentarily fixing it and then you'll never recreate it and by me just doing that maybe that was a mistake i don't know intermittent problems are the worst let's go drive it i guess cross our fingers we can make it do it All right, so um, I cleared the codes before we taking this test drive. I, of course, I have the heater code back immediately. That's fine. Um, I just, I'm more interested in our throttle body codes. All right. I hate the we'll give it back to them idea, but this is what sucks about touching things first instead of test driving first. Not that we would have, you know, it can go both ways. A visual inspection is good too, but I started the visual inspection and I think I got a little too aggressive. You know, untaping a throttle body connection and then having a wire that pops out and then you, then you question, well, was that wire loose? 
Was that our problem? And then I unplugged the throttle actuator control module connection. That could have been a mistake. But you can look at that on the flip side. If, if there was water in there and we spent an hour test driving when we could have just unplugged that and had a look. So there's two ways to look at it. Sometimes you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. It's not a perfect science. You know, freeze frame data showed 66 degrees on that TAC trouble code. I think it was the P1, uh, P0120. So it's not like he was driving it when it happened. He started it up. I can't break it. You already did break it when you pulled on that wire, probably. I don't know. I think I pulled, I, I mean, I wasn't pulling that hard when that came apart, but really? yeah, the, the whole thing needs to be redone. Uh, as far as our comments of it being wired wrong because they're supposed to be opposite each other, the wipers, and they both rise and fall together, I'm not worried about that because it runs perfectly. And if that was the case, it would be immediate fault right now if, if it was wired backward. So the fact that they both increase and decrease together is a non-issue in my opinion on this model. So we have a heater circuit fault. I mean, we could at least look at that, have something to go with with this video. The Bank 2 Sensor 1 heater circuit. I believe this has separate fuses for the O2s as well. Let's take a look real quick. Bank 2 Sensor 1 heater is purple and pink. Let's see where this pink wire goes. Looks like pin one. O2 fuse, but that would be more than 102 using that fuse and i only had the one heater code i believe it's this one those two guys would be o2a fuse so one and four so the bank one sensor one and the bank two sensor one o2s share the same fuse i'm not even going to bother going to the fuse because the bank one sensor one was working fine when the bank two was not. We would have codes for the bank one heater as well. So just do a quick visual on that. See if we see some mm -hmm. damage in the wiring. And if I don't see damage, a quick power and ground check and we can say, hey, bad O2. But that's not his main complaint. I mean, that's not why we're here. We're, we're here to address the throttle body issue and, and we're, just, we're just not having luck doing so. That's still rolling, right? Yeah. So as I'm talking, while you're getting set up. I'm just following the voltage, uh, the, the feed voltage on this TAC module just to see where it goes. I, I believe we'd have separate codes, but PCM ignition one fuse. So that's that same, that's that same fuse. Maybe we get lucky here. So one and seven. One, pin one goes to my throttle actuator control module. Seven should go to the ECM. One comes over, that's that line right there to seven. Yeah, ignition feed to the ECM. Um, and I, I mentioned that because these are known for power distribution box issues. And I wanna pay attention to this ignition one voltage on the scan tool, this guy right here as I'm moving the box. One more hopeful visual wiggle test. Otherwise, we're gonna have Danner rewire this throttle actuator control connector and cross our fingers, give it back to him. Oh, what's that? What is that? Oh, that's nothing. That's just 12.3 and 12.2. I don't think, unless that's, so my top range is 12.4 at the max, my min is 12.1. Those spikes mean nothing. They got to be bigger than that, but let me see which one my ignition one fuse is. Here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wiggle some of these relays. Nope. Gotta love intermittent problems. I'm not worried about those voltage spikes here, people. You're talking 0.1 of a volt. That is a non-issue. What to do? What to call? I mean, the heater circuit's not a big deal. It's most likely a bad O2. 
I can do some quick checks there, but I'm more worried about all the other stuff that we've done so far. It's like, it's all worthless, like all of this. But we'll be back tomorrow, so we can always give it another shot tomorrow. I mean, it could have been that one wire that was loose, but it wasn't like loose, loose. I had to tug a little bit. That's the feed from the fuse, purple white. That, that's gonna be my control. It's ground side controlled. I don't know if it goes to a constant ground or the engine computer. I believe it goes to the computer. Next page again. O2 S low control. Yeah, these are ground side switched. Should be that guy. This purple white or one of these purples or the yellows. There's purple, yellow. Either way, these are all ground side switched. I gotta grab my, I'll grab my test light, I guess. I hit my knee, Caleb. <laughs> I hit my knee off the door. So the two browns are my heater, sensor side. I gotta be real careful in this test I'm about to do that these pins do not t touch each other. This is something when I teach class, I never, never let my students do this, ever. Because if these two pins touch each other and I turn that driver on, I have the potential of hurting that driver in the computer. Um, just trying to do a quick test here with my test light in between the heater circuit so I can show you guys good power and ground. And I cannot let that touch. It's super important. Just kind of working one-handed, taking a little bit of a chance here. I just need to be cautious. And this is really as simple as starting it now. And the fact that that's flickering on and off is kind of odd. You don't usually see that type of control with just the key on. So I'm going to see if I have a bi-directional test for the heater. Okay, let's see if this works. Now, this should look different. It's still pulsing, right? Yeah. Let's get a uh, let's get an on command. There you go. An off command. An on command. Cool. And then here's off. Yeah, that's just going to be driver control. I figured that was normal. Yeah, and so that test told us good feed and good ground because I'll put the test light in series um, as the heater circuit. So there's no issues wiring all the way down to the sensor. That is the bank two sensor. And uh, well, that'd be the only other variable is, th is if I was on the upstream of the bank one, but bank one on GM on the six liter Actually, all of their V8s is driver side. I'm on passenger side, which is bank two. With my test light in there acting as the sensor, if I start this, we won't have an immediate heater code like we did before. Let's try that. As far as the random pulsing goes, I'm okay with that. That's not unusual to see those kind of controls on a circuit that's off. Uh, case in point, Caleb is our uh, EVAP purge valve that we had just uh, been playing around with on the Hyundai where we had a constant 1.8 percent duty cycle even when it was off so that's not unprecedented to see stuff like that display codes all codes no codes present i'm going to start this get a quick shot of that light down there tell me if that light is lit okay yeah it's no it's blinking that's weird okay i'm gonna i take my test light out of there now with the test light removed, I'm pretty sure that's gonna flag that code right away now. Yep, just like that. So what, what was the test light? The test light was acting as a good heater circuit. Confirmed that is bank two for sure. Doing that test also confirmed that wiring is good, computer's good. It needs that upstream O2 on that side, but that has nothing to do with his throttle body issue. Uh, I'm gonna get, let's get Danner in the, sh in the frame here for a second now. All right, here's the plan. Um, it needs a bank two sensor 102, the heater's bad, um, but that's not his main complaint, which is the stalling and throttle body yeah. stuff. Um, I can't duplicate it. So we'll be back tomorrow. And I don't know if you get time, maybe, go around a block or something, okay. see what you can do. But his complaint was I, getting shut down going like force limit. Not, yeah, stuff force, stuff. yeah, throttle body codes, force limit, reduced power. Um, I, I'm, I'm suggesting that, that we rewire that. 
you know, I, I mean, that wire was loose. I didn't pull hard. Was that our problem? I, I, well, I think we need to, we need to re repair that. Okay. It's got three butt connectors that aren't even heat shrink style on there. Yeah, it so needs to be redone. Yeah. So you got the, the dog, dog house is still, one. no, That's it's still off. off. Yeah, it needs okay. to be to fix those wires. Yeah. So what, what do you, I mean, what do you want me yeah, to do? What? Well, there's nothing you can do right now because it, it's not broken now. No, so I know. You potentially found a problem. So we got two things. You can either give it back to him and let him use it for a while, make sure it don't act up again. After we repair After that. After we repair yeah. those and then. Uh, and it needs yeah. that O2, but I mean, it also, it had all kind of codes in the other systems too, but. That's not what it's here for, yeah, you know? Yeah, just be able to drive it reliably. Yeah, that's, it's a work truck. So we'll, we'll pick this back up tomorrow. I don't know if Danner's gonna have time to, tonight to rewire that, or maybe we're gonna rewire it. I don't know what's gonna go on, but for now, uh, it needs an upstream O2 on, the, on bank two side, and we can't duplicate the fault. Maybe that wire that pulled apart was the issue. I don't know, I think that's a stretch. I really don't think so. I think we still have an issue here, and, me unplugging modules and stuff probably wasn't helpful. I don't, I don't know what, I'm not sure. We'll see you tomorrow.